Thank you. Uh, I'd li also like to thank the organizers uh, for the opportunity to be here once again. Uh, it's definitely my favorite meeting. So in terms of talking about uh, hypofractionation, it's really important to understand a little bit about radiobiology. And in the U.S., when, when you take a first course in, say, French literature, it's always French Literature 101. So this, uh, this talk is going to be uh, subtitled Radiobiology 101. Uh, I have uh, no conflict of interest disclosures, but I would like to disclose my indebtedness to both Tim Wayland and John Yarnold for their contributions to this talk. Uh, I'm going to start by giving you the summary of what I'm about to say and then come back to these summary uh, points at the end. It's now possible to modulate radiotherapy to achieve highly homogeneous doses. It turns out we consistently know that the response to radiotherapy has both a linear or alpha component and a squared or quadratic beta component. And the alpha-beta ratio, which is an important concept in uh, fractionation, is the point where alpha component and the beta component are equal, and beyond the alpha-beta ratio, the quadratic response begins to dominate. We know that the alpha-beta ratio for normal tissues is about three. It was initially thought that the alpha-beta ra ratio for all tumors was about 10, so that daily doses in the range of 1.8 to 2 gray protected normal tissues, as I'll show you. But recently, we've learned that the alpha-beta ra ratio for breast cancer is about three, which is what it is for normal tissues. And that radically alters how we think about fractionation. The available randomized clinically tr clinical trials, particularly the Canadian trial, and the updated results from the START-B trial shown in San Antonio provide increased support for hypofractionation. Uh, this approach is clearly indicated in many patients and I believe will be increasingly used in the future. So what do we mean by hypofractionation? Uh, conventional whole breast irradiation is 1.8 to 2 gray per day, given for about five weeks, and frequently is followed by booster radiation. Hypofractionation means giving more than 2 gray per day. And since the response to radiation is not linear, the, this results in fewer treatments uh, for the patient. So the rationale for hypofractionation is both convenience to the patient and costs. If we can deliver treatment which was equally safe and effective in a shorter period of time, that's really great for our patients and saves money for the system. And this is due to a number, uh, two major factors. One is major improvements in radiation delivery with higher beam energies, three-dimensional dose calculation, and beam modulation, so that we're now able to achieve a much greater three-dimensional dose homogeneity. And the other important development is that we now have more refined radiobiological estimates of dose equivalents. It's very important, particularly in hypofractionated treatment, to have high levels of dose homogeneity. We know that the tumor control typically depends on the minimal dose, while the toxicity depends on areas of maximal doses, which we call hot spots. The dose response curve is actually quite steep, so that these hot spots not only receive greater effective daily dose, but increased total dose, and that combination is referred to as double trouble. So it is now possible to obtain high levels of dose homogeneity with modulating the radiation beam with subfields and higher energy. Adequate homogeneity can be obtained in nearly all patients. True IMRT, where you use fields from multiple angles, is not required and, in my judgment, uh, is not indicated because of the increased low-dose irradiation. So as I mentioned, radiation response has this linear quadratic relationship. 
It's a function of, it has a linear component and a squared or quadratic component. And this has been shown in multiple systems to be the relationship in, in cell culture, in mod animal models, and in the patient. The alpha-beta ratio is the point where the alpha and beta components are equal so that beyond the alpha-beta ratio, the quadratic component dominates. So the alpha-beta ratio of three is shown in, on the uh, upper curve, and the alpha-beta ratio of 10 is shown in the lower curve. And so the alpha-beta ratio here at three, you begin to see the quadratic uh, response dominating. With the alpha-beta ratio of 10, the quadratic response begins to dominate only at 10 gray, which is well beyond wh where this is drawn. We know from multiple studies that late responding normal tissues, which is what we most care about in, in radiotherapy, um, for example, fibrosis in the breast, has an alpha beta ratio of three. And early responding normal tissues, like the skin, have an, uh, an alpha beta ratio of 10. And the real question is, what is the alpha beta ratio for breast cancer? Initially, we thought that all cancers had an alpha-beta ratio of 10 compared to late responding normal tissues where the alpha-beta ratio is three. And if this is true, then daily doses in the range of two gray would best protect normal tissues. So if the alpha-beta ratio for normal tissues is three and the alpha-beta ratio for tumor is 10, if you're in this range, you actually get more effect on the cancer than normal tissue, and two gray per day would be best. But recent data suggest that the cancer, breast cancer in particular, prostate cancer as well, has an alpha beta ratio of about three, which is actually the same as it is for dose limiting normal tissues. And if so, two gray per day spare breast cancer as much as they spare normal tissue. So there's no advantage, and both Tim Whalen and John Yarnold led them to believe that larger fractions are worth testing. Of course, in using, going to larger fractions, we're concerned about potential effects on late responding normal tissue, late toxicity, so we need substantial long follow-up. There are concerns about interaction with systemic therapy, particularly chemotherapy, and lots of discussion about for whom this approach is indicated. This is a patient of mine who I saw and treated in 1981. She had a very early breast cancer. This is before the time when we were doing axillary surgery and she got treated with breast and nodal irradiation. And she did fine for 20 years when she came back and follow up with some minor numbness in her right hand and multiple workups showed no evidence of recurrence and we uh, established by exclusion a diagnosis of brachial plexopathy. And over the next decade, she had progressive loss of motor function leading to essentially a useless arm. And she was fine for the first 20 years. These are the major first generation trials. Uh, on your first is Tim Whalen's trial, the Canadian trial, uh, which was published in the New England Journal a couple of years ago, uh, using conventional fractionation versus moderately uh, hypofractionated radiation uh, with 12 years of follow up. And the Canadian, uh, the START B trial from John Yarnold had over 2,000 patients, and the updated results that he presented in San Antonio uh, had a very similar randomization, conventional radiation versus hypofractionated. One difference in the number of fractions given, otherwise very similar. Uh, the John Yarnold's group also did a START A trial and a pilot trial in which the randomization uh, had the same number of weeks of treatment. And this trial was specifically done to allow a determination of the alpha-beta ratio.
by keeping the uh, lapse time the same, one can get an unconfounded estimate of the alpha beta ratio. And based upon the START A trial and the pilot trial, uh, the alpha beta ratio for normal tissues was 3.1, and for tumor, it was 3.5. So this is consistent with the hypothesis that giving two gray per day is as gentle on breast cancer as it is on normal tissue. The Canadian trial with 12 years of follow-up was practice changing in the United States. Uh, and as I mentioned, the updated results of the START trials were just presented in San Antonio. And, to, and together, they provide justification for increased use of hypofractionation. These are the Canadian results uh, shown from the New England Journal. On your uh, left are cosmetic results comparing hypofractionated treatment from and conventional fractionation showing absolutely no difference. And also on your right is local tumor relapse. Uh, again, the two arms are superimposable. These are the st START B trial results. Uh, on your left, again, are freedom from adverse effects. And if anything, the hypofractionated patients are, are doing somewhat better uh, than the patients treated with conventional fractionation. And if one also looks at rate of local tumor relapse, the hypofractionated arm is doing slightly better. It's important to think about who were the patients in these trials. They tended to be favorable patients. Uh, the vast majority were ER positive. Very few were grade three or ER negative. Uh, uh, less than 25% or less were under the age of 50. In the Canadian trial, there were no patients got a boost, 43% in START B. Uh, nodal radiation was not allowed in the Canadian trial and 7% in the START B trial, and very few patients got adjuvant chemotherapy. So the generalizability of the results, uh, the patients in these trials were older with more favorable cancers with chemotherapy and boost not routinely used. Uh, two years ago, or maybe a little over a year ago, ASTRO established guidelines for the use of hypofractionation uh, restricted to patients who are 50 and older with T1, T2, T2 cancers that are node negative, getting breast conserving ther therapy, no chemotherapy. They recommended the uh, uh, treatment uh, to our neighbors to the north, the so-called Canadian fractionation. Uh, one had to have no heart in the field. There was no agreement about the use of a boost. And the dose homogeneity had to be within 7%. Based on the START B trial, we've enlarged our use of hypofractionation uh, to where patients are getting tangents only. They can have a minimal nodal involvement. We're also including patients with DCIS treated with breast conserving therapy over the age of 60. We're now allowing adjuvant chemotherapy. We're doing Canadian fractionation. We totally agree with excluding the heart in the field. And we're allowing boost the radiation either 250 centigrade for two or four fractions and completely agree with the uh, use of dose homogeneity w within 7%. There are a number of clinical trials in progress. Many of these are from John Yarnold's group, and some of them are really quite uh, innovative and, uh, and very interesting. The, the FAST trial, where we, we saw two year results published, compares. Uh, standard fractionation to we weekly doses of 5.7 and 6 gray once a week, all given over five weeks. And this is going to allow us to look at the alpha-beta ratio extended well beyond the alpha-beta ratio itself to test whether the formula that we use is accurate beyond the alpha-beta ratio. Uh, the, the hypofractionation that we're now using is below the uh, alpha-beta ratio, so it's, it's, it's definitely quite safe. We're going to have to really see how th this looks. 
There are a number of studies both in Europe and in the U.S. looking at integrated boosts, another way to uh, hypofractionate. So there are exciting times ahead in terms of how far we can push hypofractionation. So in summary, it is now possible to modulate radiation to achieve highly homogeneous doses. The response to radiation has both a linear alpha and a quadratic beta component. And the alpha-beta ratio is the point at which the alpha and beta components are equal and so that beyond this point, the quadratic response begins to dominate. The, we know that the alpha-beta ratio for normal tissues is about three. It was initially thought that the alpha-beta ratio for all tumors was about 10. And if that's true, then daily doses of two gray protect normal tissues. But we now know that the alpha-beta ratio for breast cancer is about three. The available randomized clinical trials, particularly the Canadian and START-B trials, provide increased support for hypofractionation. This approach is clearly indicated in many patients, and it's my anticipation that we're going to increasingly use this approach. And I can tell you on a personal level that the use of hy hypofractionated whole breast irradiation at our center has been very well received by our patients and other clinicians. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Harris, for this comprehensive overview. Um, the discussion will be at the end of the session, and so we will continue with the next controversial issue in radiotherapy, which is partial breast.